So now in this context, let us just think of what types of tokenization can we have, right? And uh, I am going to repeat the first two types that I mentioned, which was character based. Here every character is a, uh, every character becomes a token, right. So in this case your vocabulary would for English for example as you guys were saying it would just be A to Z, then maybe the numbers 1 to 9, then maybe some spatial symbols and you are done, right. So this would be like order 100, like less than 100 tokens in your vocabulary, okay. Uh, that is one. Now the other extreme is that every word becomes a uh, uh, token, right? So enjoy, enjoying, everything is a token. Now let us assume if you do that, right? Suppose you get 500k. So this is character based tokenization, this is word based, word as you and I understand, which is anything which is separated by white space, right? So uh, suppose this is word based and you end up with a very large vocabulary of 500k. What is the problem with that? So be it, right? I mean, this because this seems like a very simple approach. Wherever I take, see a space, I just count it as a word. And I get a very large vocabulary. What is the problem? I already discussed a few problems, which is this out of vocabulary, uh, the new words which come in, how do you do that, right? Uh, but what else, right? What does this size become a problem for? How? Because your corpus is, anyways, billion tokens or trillion tokens nowadays. So 500k just seems like a very small number to me in comparison. So, what is the problem? Where does the vocabulary get used? embedding. So, first problem is that your embedding now would be 500k cross say 1024 is your embedding size. So, as this grows, this matrix becomes very large, the number of parameters becomes very large, right. Every new word adds 1024 new parameters, okay. That is one problem. The other problem is that this is your model and when you are predicting a word, what are you doing actually? you are predicting a distribution over the vocabulary, right. So now you are predicting a distribution over 500k elements, right. And this now is going to be a very expensive computation, right, because your denominator is the sum of these 500k entries and then you have to do a softmax on that, right. So this becomes very expensive as you keep growing the vocabulary. So both the parameter size increases and the computational cost increases, right. On the other extreme, if you just use this. So, this large vocabulary seems like we are not interested in. Okay. Now, let us come to small vocabulary. Right? This seems okay. We just have 100 characters. What is the problem with this? No, but every character would be an embedding, right? So, M, A, N, A, N, that would be the input here, or uh, the other word was Naman. Naman. So, Same characters, but no, but the yeah, you have the positional embeddings, anyways, right? So, that is one thing. What what is the problem with having character based token? Still, I mean water, so W, A, T, R, even if I have missed the E in spelling, that is okay, we want good spellings only, you know, at the output. So, but it is still looking at the other letters, right? So, it will produce something very basic, I think it, uh, thinking a bit more complicated, something very basic as you see what I am writing on the screen. Let us take a sentence like a typical sentence from newspaper, which roughly has 20 words on average, right? Now what will happen? 20 words, words characters. characters, right? So every word if you assume in English is uh, average 5 to 6 words, then a simple sentence like 20 words, right, which we typically encounter in newspaper or Wikipedia also has similar average word length. Now that becomes 120 tokens because it will get multiplied by 5 or 6, right? So what I am saying is that a 20 word sentence, if you tokenize it using characters and each word has roughly 5 to 6 characters, right? Then now you have a 120 token length, sequence length input, right? So now the input to your model is going to be 120 tokens long, right? So that many, that much attention will happen, right? So that many uh, elements are participating just for a small sentence, right? It's just a 20 word sentence. It's not even 5 and 2 sequence length as we had seen, right? So we will not be able to pack in a lot of uh, context in 5 and 2 tokens now. 5 and 2 tokens would just be like 100 words. Earlier it was like 500 words. If you remember from the previous class that entire Wikipedia paragraph that we had packed in, right? And now it would just be like 100 words which are going in, right? And uh, it just seems like unnecessary, uh, just, just like feeding very little information per token, right? So that is also problematic. 
So this side is bad, that side is also bad. So we perhaps need something in the middle, right? So what we need is something known as subword tokenization. So let's see what subword tokenization is. Okay, so this is what subword tokenization would look like. So now I don't have don't as a word in my vocabulary. Instead, I have subwords. And in this case, it looks logical, right? Because do is a word, right? Uh, it comes in various uh, suffixes: does, ing, doesn't, don't, and so on. So if I use do as a suffix, as a token, it does make sense, right? Similarly, this nt would appear in various contexts like can't, right? Won't, don't, and couldn't, and so on, right? So now I'm instead of using the characters, which was like one character at a time, or the word which is like enjoyed, enjoying everything being different, I'm just going to use subwords as tokens. So that may be a good middle ground between using whole words versus going down to the very atomic uh, level of using a character, right? So that's the intuition. And what we are going to do in this lecture is going to look at a bunch of such subword tokenizers. Okay? Yeah, so what you said, and what we'll be able to do is go back to those challenges with, that we had. How do we select the vocabulary size? Does this deal with out of vocabulary problem? And now you can imagine acerophobia, which was A C E R O phobia. So maybe the word phobia it is already seen. So if I if I segment it as a c e r o phobia, if these are the subwords that I choose, right? Then probably these subwords have appeared many times in the corpus. So these this is how the word will get tokenized. So it's not at character level. I am not taking the full word also. I am just taking subwords as tokens. Right? So that's what we are going to do. How do you come up with these subwords? Who said that? ACE is a subword as opposed to ACER or RO is a subword as opposed to ROPH right what is the because now we have many choices right as many choices as a it's an exponential number of choices that we have right so how do we choose the right uh, segmentation right so that's what we are going to focus on okay so these are the ca categories right so character level we understand it's straightforward you don't even i mean you can just simply write a small piece of python code to get the character level tokenization the word level tokenization is just use spaces as tokens, as tokenizer, right? So wherever you see a space, just consider that to be a word. What we are going to look at subword, and there are going to be three methods that we are going to look at. Uh, there are other categories also, but these are the three popular ones: uh, character level, subword level, and word level. And within subword level, we are going to look at these three methods, which is byte pair encoding, popularly known as BPE, word piece, and sentence piece, right? So uh, let's. Uh, start with BP first. 